Good morning and welcome to your Home Soul Guaranteed Radio Show with Wally Kerr. I'm your host, Dave McKay. Joining us, as always, every Saturday morning, bright and early, Mr. Wally Kerr. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. McKay. How, How are, are you doing? I'm doing great. Had uh, another great week this week and uh, enjoying the warm weather. Nice that we got all the rain. Yeah, everything's been good this week. What about you? It's been a good week, and I'm ready to have some fun this morning. And our show this morning is sponsored by the fine folks at Oklahoma Home Inspection Service. So we'll uh, talk about them right. briefly in a little bit. So uh, we thank them for their sponsorship of the show. What do we have on tap for this morning, and how's the market looking today? And we'll talk about the market here in a minute. Tell everybody uh, what's happened over the last week since we did our last show. Today, Dave, we're going to talk about cash offer options for home sellers who maybe don't want to go through the home selling process. Okay. That's a little bit easier. You probably leave a little money on the table by just taking a cash offer and not opening your home up to letting the market look at it. Sure. To determine what fair market value is. So we'll talk about that a bit today. Okay. To fix or not to fix. Okay. Okay. Getting your home like ready. This. Are we going to do it or are we going to leave it alone? Can we sell it the way it is, or is it going to bring more money? Sure. Is it going to be worth the return? Am I going to spend $1,000 and get two or $3,000 back? So let's talk to fix or not to fix today. Okay. I'd like to talk about our certified pre-owned home program, which is um, a way to make sure that something doesn't derail your home contract once you've got it under contract with a buyer. Sure. We call it pending once it's not active, it's pending. So okay. we'll talk about that. What to do if your listing is about to expire. Maybe you're listed with another realtor right now, and maybe things aren't going so great. Maybe your home hasn't sold, or you haven't had the great experience that you expected. So we'll talk about what to do if, you're, if your listing is about to expire. Okay. Dave got some open houses to talk about for our listeners to attend this weekend awesome. if they would like to. I like that. Along with several new listings to talk about. We've got a few homes coming on the market. They're really spread all over in about a 50 to 75 mile radius of downtown. We'll talk about those. And then if we have time today, we'll talk about best down payment and financing options for those who are selling or maybe you're not selling a home and you're looking for that lowest down payment. That best interest rate. Okay. A program that best fits our listener today. And we'll talk about that. Let's talk about the market and what's happened over the last week. Home sales are in full swing. Okay, good. A uh, lot of people buying. The end of school is very near. That's right. We're in the buying season. If you're a parent, you're probably going through a lot right now as your kids <laughs> go through banquets and finals and projects and celebrations. But boy, home buying season is here. Yes. And for those looking to buy, the good news is there are a lot of homes coming on the market right okay. now. Okay. So the selection is up. Perhaps you've looked over the last three or four or five months and just said, gosh, I, I'd like to sell, but I really don't have the desire to to sell right now because I don't see a home that I really want to buy. Sure. I think we call that the dream home in here, don't we, Dave? Yes. Yeah. Everything has to fit into the box. Yeah. There's no perfect homes, but boy, if you can find one that checks eight or nine out of your 10 or 11 perfects, that's right. you probably found a pretty good home. And right? the big three things that we used to say was location, 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 but now it is location, but it's also condition, condition, and does the price fit my budget? That's right. right. Yes. Now, are the payments good for me? Is the down payment right? You know, do I like the condition of the home? So here's what the market looked like this last week. Okay. 680 new listings on the Oklahoma City Multilist, which is where most of the real estate industry does yes, its yes. work. And then placed under contract last week, a little lower than that, 614. That's good for both parties, right? Buyers and sellers. You know what I wrote down on my notes today was balanced. There Looks you like go. Kind of a balanced market. Yes. Makes it a little bit easier. If I had told our listeners today that there were 600 new sales and only 300 new listings, it wouldn't be as exciting because you'd see everything was sure. selling. Yes. And there wasn't enough coming on the market. Mm -hmm. So a week ago, the consumer price index data came out and it did something good for the market. So it was what the government and the Fed expected to see. Okay. Uh, thank goodness, right? It's now been... 13, 14 months, and the Fed has raised rates 10 times since March of 2022. Holy cow. That changed the real estate market a lot. It's good to see now that the Fed says, okay, what we've done has kind of got inflation under control. 
and now, so the numbers were as expected. Hey, guess what? Interest rates are pulling back a little bit. You just mentioned the last 14 months, and we have been around, I'm just going to throw it out there, around six and a quarter, six and a half or so. So 14 months ago, as we started the increase in the rate, were we down in the fours maybe? Yeah, we might have even been in the high threes at that time, Oh, okay, Dave. so that we, far. We so might have been below four. So okay. we saw a peak last November of about seven and a quarter. Yes. Recently, they were almost seven again, even two weeks ago. Oh, wow. And then the Fed decided to do a very small rate increase, what they believe might be their last one. And then the consumer price index data came out. Without getting too technical about that, it was good last week. Okay, good. And so the interest rates have softened a little bit. Let's call it more like around six and a half. Okay. Now, I'm not a mortgage lender, so I can't legally give rates. Sure. Okay, there's lots of disclosures that go on there. But generally speaking, if you've got a good credit score and you've got good income, and you make your payments on time, and you've got, let's say, a, a 660 to 680 credit score or higher, rates around 6.5%. Okay. So pretty good on the rates. There's some great programs available that we'll talk about today. Here's the most important maybe opening statement I can make today, that maybe as early as July or August, okay. that rates could be down in the high fives, and right now we're around 65 So if you're a homeowner, and you're thinking about selling and turning around and buying, there's some good news it looks like on the horizon if the information continues the same. If you're a home buyer that's been on the parking block, it looks like that might change soon. And we know that time moves so fast. So if that's going to be July, we need to think about now, you know, getting the house ready. Yeah, absolutely. Start doing some cleaning, it, get that pre-inspection to know what might derail us or hopefully not derail us once we get that information yeah. and just start cleaning things up. Normally, a real estate closing is about 45 days. So if we're sitting in the middle of May, there's a really good chance that later in the summer, we may just continue to see these rates come down. There's a lot of optimism Fantastic. for that. We'll talk about that today. Good. So, uh, you know, Dave, at the end of the day, I'm a 30-year broker. I'd consider it a privilege if our listeners would call me to discuss the sale of their home at 330-3000. I'll be available after our show today and be glad to take any listeners' calls. Along with selling homes for the highest price and in a shorter amount of time, I think you said your average at one time was about 17 days. Boy, that's exactly what I quoted last week, and that is correct. Okay, so there's a couple of different programs. Let's talk about the cash offer program for people who need to sell before they buy, correct? So that is one of the programs we offer where we are willing to buy someone's home now if they say, I contracted to buy this home, but it's contingent upon me selling my home. Okay. We can buy someone's home now, and it helps them step into their next home easier, but I could do something different if our listeners like. Let me explain real quickly. Okay. I'm actually willing to go in and write a contract to buy your home today so that you can contract for what you want, so that you can walk up to the seller and say, I sold my home. Okay, so the Guaranteed Home Sold program is on the selling side where right. this is on the other side. I've found the house I want, my wife loves it, and everything just fell in line and we're going to buy it. Oops, I have my house over here. I need to unload this. That's exactly right. Okay. So, okay. so I'm willing to write a contract to buy your home now, give you a date so that you can contract or continue with what you've purchased, but then I'll place your home, if you want, on the market for a week or two weeks or three weeks, whatever you want, and if it doesn't sell for a price that nets you more, You've got my safety net, and I will still buy your home at the price we agree to up front. Think okay. of me as being your safety net. Okay, so th that sounds fantastic. Now, leading into the guaranteed to sell offer, right. how's that a little different? How's that work? This is what most people know me for since 2007 in the Metro, is I'm the man that's willing to buy your home if it doesn't sell in an agreed period. Yes. And that's yes. typically 90 to 120 days. Now, Dave... I may be able to shorten that up because we're in prime selling season. If you look at my materials and you go online and read about the program, it's normally 90 to 120 days. Hey, we're in a busy market right now, so I can probably shorten that up for a lot of our listeners. So I buy the home at a price that we agree to up front. There's absolutely no gimmicks, Dave. Most homes qualify, but it does depend on condition on the inside. Again, it's the peace of mind that your home will sell. And if it doesn't sell in that period, 
that I'll buy it. And this is the program day that typically is going to get the listeners more when enough people see your home. Anytime you put something into the market and give it enough time for enough people to look at it, the market is going to determine what market value is. I think that's one of the reasons I cringe when I know that some people take an investor's offer. The investor just says, hey, I'll give you this. And you're left laying in bed at night wondering, did I leave five or ten or fifteen thousand dollars on the table i really never most likely you sure did i really never put it i agree yes but i didn't put it on the market i didn't give the market a chance to tell me what my home was worth and i wonder how much money i lost and that's that's kind of a icky feeling you know what i mean feel that way that you just left some money so our third option dave is get your home ready program have we ever talked about that i think we have and this is where maybe a few repairs need to be done a couple of things just need to be fixed up just to get it ready to put on the market maybe someone doesn't have the money to do that maybe they do need to put in a new ac unit which can cost quite a bit of money you're able to come in and kind of do the backing for that and then just off of the uh, the sale price later is when they can pay you back that's exactly what it. you're talking about it yeah. is it is we had an owner recently in shawnee we looked at her home on the inside the dog had done some damage and chewed on some woodwork needed some painting down on the inside Dave, she had a backyard that was at least a quarter acre in size. Some of the fencing was falling down. There were some holes. It had a large deck in the backyard with some built-in planters on the deck. But that had caved in, Hmm. and then the backyard needed some cleanup. It was just she'd moved on with her life in a new relationship and said, I just want to sell this home. I looked at her along with my agent, Kelly, and we said, you can get a lot more for this home, and we're your biggest cheerleaders if sure. you'll just spend seven or eight thousand dollars, we think you can double that return and get fifteen, maybe twenty thousand more. So oh, okay. she agreed. Wow. We put her into the get your home ready program. So for our listeners, you may not have the available cash. You may not want to go put it on a credit card at twenty four percent interest. Sure. Okay. So your home may need some carpet, might need some paint might need some backyard work. Maybe it's the fence. Maybe it's landscaping. Things that just need to be done to sell your home for more money. That's our Get Your Home Ready program. And if any of our listeners think that might be speaking to them, just give me a call. Shoot me a text. Wally, how does this work? Wally, I'd like you to look at my home. I really do want to sell. I'm moving out of town. I'm in a little financial difficulty, going through a separation or a divorce. Whatever the situation is, I'd love to talk to our listeners about it and help them with their situation. 405-330-3000. And this is some pretty innovative stuff here. You have every angle covered in selling a home. All the different kind of situations that come up. Call, text you, 330-3000. I'd consider it a privilege to work for you if you're listening today. You can have my cell phone number, too. I've never given that out on the air, but I'm happy to do that. To hit my own personal cell is 405 412 7360. And we are expanding around the state, by the way, Dave. We're okay. getting ready in a strategic move to begin servicing Shawnee even heavier than we already are, the Enid area. And then we're making moves to get up into Tulsa. So All we're right. working not only metro wide, but have expanded that out. If you're a listener on the show, I'd love to hear from you. Well, and that helps too, because uh, if someone's moving to Tulsa, Wally is your one-stop shop, as we've seen. Now, we just talked about your fix-it program, if you will. That's an intriguing question when you have maybe a pre-inspection, and here's a little list, and and you know, okay, a roof, I understand I'm going to have to have that done. But how do I know when I should fix something and when I should just leave it and let the buyer know, here's a list of a couple of things that might need to be done when you move in? Really good question. So, First of all, let's talk about appraisers, because many times, Dave, if a home needs work and an appraiser shows up and says, yeah, this is a pretty good home, but there's some rotted wood on the side of the home, or it needs paint and it's chipping and peeling and we'll loan on this home, but we need this to be taken care of. These are fix-it items that really a homeowner should do up front. Okay. And then we're also looking for maybe the big deals. You just talked about the pre-inspection that we talk about with Todd Stewart with Oklahoma Home Inspection Service here in the Metro. He does a lot of pre-inspections for us where he goes out, charges a reasonable fee. It's typically two, three, four hundred dollars, determines 
what might come up in an inspection that could be a deal killer. So those are the things that maybe we're talking about to fix or not to fix. The big things, the things that could be deal killers, the things that will be concerning to a buyer. Let's do a quick one. What about foundation work? I show up today to show you and your family a home, and you walk around the side of the home and you say, gosh, Wally, did you see these big cracks over here on this home? And I walk over, and there's gaps in the brick mortar, and this pretty gaping gap, and you say, wow, this looks really concerning to me. Tell you what, Wally, you were showing us four other homes today, I think, and why don't we pass on this one and move on to another one? So that's the kind of things we're looking for. Sure, okay. And the kinds of things that an appraiser is looking for, too. So an appraiser, what you're saying is they're not just coming in to get a dollar value for the home and move on because they could point out that, hey, there's some issues that could be structural issues or other things that could really impact the value of the home. So they could actually require repairs to be made. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So the appraisal will come in. Now, Dave, there's three basic types of loans that most people know about, FHA Mm -hmm. and VA and conventional loans. Yes. The ones where the appraisers get pickiest are the FHA and VA loans, which are government underwritten loans. In other words, the government's involved. They're underwriting that loan. They're allowing a lower down payment on those loans. So when you think about it, if there's a lower down payment, and somebody just picks up and moves out, sure. sort of like a renter getting up and so moving out in the middle risk of the night. For the bank. It's higher risk for the bank. So the appraiser is there not to make you or me happy as the buyer or seller. They're there to protect the bank. So when the appraiser on an FHA or VA purchase goes out to look at a home, that's the kind of things they're looking for is, does the house need paint? Is the fence in total disrepair? Are there foundation issues that look apparent? Uh, What do the roof shingles look like? If they look really old and deteriorated, they may get involved in wanting a roofing inspection done to see what those shingles, what the remaining life would be on those shingles. So as a seller, uh, if I want to avoid a headache, do I just kind of pass on people that have those kind of loans? So that's Because that's going to be required for them to purchase. Another great question. So let me ask you this, Dave. If there are 10 people shopping for a home like yours this weekend and your home is on the market, out of those 10 people, how many of those people do you want interested in your home? I want all 10. Sure. That was a tricky question. Really, it was rhetorical. Sure. So the gig is if there are 10 people shopping, maybe there's one or two that could buy cash. Maybe there's three or four that could buy conventional. And then there may be two or three FHA buyers or two or three VA buyers. So if the home needs work and an appraiser is going to call it out, or if it doesn't look good and it's rot, it's chipping paint, it's the fence is falling down, there's a really good chance the appraiser is going to call that out. So those are things, the title of our segment was, to fix or not to fix. Okay, so I just said avoid the headache. It's almost reverse. I'm going to have less of a headache when I know I have multiple offers, multiple people bidding. Because I have repaired a couple of these issues, you're right, it might be a little work up front. But just like you mentioned uh where you had to help the lady in Shawnee just fix up a couple of things. And if she spends a couple of thousand dollars, could get ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in return. This is where if I fix up a couple of those things and those people that have to have the fixed stuff from an appraiser to qualify for those loans, you know, I don't know what their financial situation is. It may be great. So they may be able to kick in a couple extra thousand dollars and then someone else does. And pretty soon I spent $5,000 and I gained $15,000 in the home sale because I had multiple offers, multiple people looking at it. Dave, do you remember looking at homes? Yes. Remember when you're out looking at homes? Sure. Did you walk in any homes that were really great? I mean, just really great. You remember some really, really nice homes. Isn't it harder to ask someone to come down when they've got a really nice home? When you walk in and it's in great condition and you walk in and say, wow, you know, this home is really in nice condition. I'm not sure what I would change here. And they've done such a great job. Wouldn't you agree that that homeowner would just get more money for their home? Sure. And you're now emotionally invested into that house if that is the one. You have your your mind already playing tricks on you going, well, that's great, Dave, but we want this house. So let's (laughs) let's open up the pocketbook and uh, 
that's interesting. That's I can help determine that with our listeners. So if you'd like to know what your home is worth now, of course, you can text me and get that value by texting 330-3000. Uh, give me your address. I'll probably pop you a question back that says, tell me about the condition on a scale of 1 to 10 with 10 being best. And yep. then do you have any extras? Do you have a pool? You know, have you done a full remodel on the inside? California closets. California closets are great, <laughs> aren't they? But then I would also be glad to look at your home and tell you the things that could be an appraisal requirement. You might be listening today and saying, you know, my house is pretty good, but now I'm wondering if it would really qualify to go FHA and VA along with conventional because conventional appraisers, it's not tied to a government program, typically requires a little bit more down. And so homes that go on a conventional loan for a buyer just typically don't require quite as many repairs. If you need to know and you'd like me to look at your home, you could even shoot me some pictures. Wally, is this going to fly? Is this going to go FHA or VA? Shoot, go uh, take a picture for me and text it to 330-3000, and I'm glad to engage in text with you. This is your Home Soul Guaranteed Radio Show with Wally Kerr. Wally, I like to hear about some homes that are actually on the market right now when you have open houses do you have a couple of those do you have some that you'd like to chat about dave we've got one in edmund one in oklahoma city let's turn our listeners on to some open houses they could see join us from one to two on sunday that's a short open house from 1 p.m to 2 p.m in edmund about a mile and a half north of the kilpatrick turnpike off of pennsylvania there's a great property at 15805 san clemente it's a gated community Lawn nice. care provided. Nice. Oh, okay. Clubhouse, community pool, and, hey, community fishing pond. Oh, wow. Okay. Really nice. This home is 16, 1,700 square feet. Redone on the inside in a bunch of areas, so lots of updates done. This home is 269.9 in a gated community in Edmond. We'd love to see you there Sunday between 1 and 2. Nice. Our last one on Sunday is in South Oklahoma City at 13908 Broadway. And this is about a 26, 2700 square foot home, four bedrooms, three baths. Plenty of size. Three car garage. Nice. It's ready for immediate occupancy. How about this? How about a fireplace in the master bedroom? I like that. That's along pretty with, cool. Along with one in the living room. Okay. Storm shelter at that property. This home is 371.5. It'll be open for two hours on Sunday day between 2 and 4 p.m. That's cool. Okay. I'm glad I asked. Um, and if, if someone wanted to check out some other homes, the website to go to again. They can visit wallycurr.com and see all of our listings available. But if you'd like to go to dreamhomesoklahoma.com, you could check out every listing that's for sale in the metro. There's about 4,500 homes on the site. It's one-stop shopping. You can view your homes, do customized searches. We've got a small home in Hennessy that we listed this week. They are buying here in the metro, so we're helping them sell in Hennessy. This is a little home about 1,300 square feet, three bed, two bath, 1,290 feet, under $110,000. Wow. Pretty hard to buy a three bed, two bath under 110. That's in Hennessy. Wow. Got one in Nawala, which is like a remodeled farmhouse on the inside, Dave. Two and a half acres. About 2,150 square feet. That's priced at 337.5. That's located at 3,900 Cactus Drive. I like that. By the way, the one in Hennessy is at 114 South Oak. Got another one to just remind our listeners we have available. It's a historic home. It's in the Plaza District area, 2216 Northwest 16th Street. This is a four-bed, four-bath, over 3,200 square feet, remodeled on the inside, and it's three sixty nine nine. Okay. Good price on okay, that one. Okay, yes. Dave, we've got a home that came back on the market. The buyer just changed their mind, walked away, lost their earnest money, got a great acreage property in Edmond North School District. This is going to be at 2520 Silverfield Lane. It's got a really pretty view of a pond from the back patio. They went in and spent about $120,000 on this home after they bought it two years ago. Oh, wow. Dave, they paid four and a quarter. They've got this home listed as a bargain at four seventy nine five, after buying it for four and a quarter and putting in over a hundred thousand dollars. One hundred and twenty thousand dollars spent. This is a great property. Wow. Twenty five twenty Silverfield Lane. It is a four bed, three and a half bath, three car garage, over twenty six hundred feet, and it's priced at four seventy nine five. They could see some other listings on our website. We did put on a really special property in Norman, seven blocks to the OU campus. 
nine blocks to the stadium. Okay. Almost like resort living. This yes. is a home that I had sold once a few years back. These people returned to me. They had used another realtor, but they returned to me to go back and market and sell this home. Hop on our websites and type in 1100 West Lindsay Street. You can do that at dreamhomesoklahoma.com. You can go to wallycurr.com. Frankly, you could just Google that address and look at the pictures. Sounds like a great place to tailgate and walk down to the games on Saturdays. Walk to the games, walk back, just beautiful wood floors. It's on over an acre. It has a waterfall. It has a pool. It has a spa. It has pergolas. It has a mosquito spray system. It has a misting system. It is an outdoor kitchen. And then it's got a guest cabana, which is great for either guests who come to town to stay with you and go to the game could be a great party house after the game, or that guest cabana could probably be used for Airbnb, Dave. That would be nice. Now, just a little while ago, you gave out your cell phone number, which is ringing in the background right now. <laughs> so we'll get to that after the show. And we are getting some emails in and some callers that are calling in, and I want to share some of those emails and questions in our coming shows. We'll start doing that next week. Okay, great. Just a little while ago, we talked about to fix or not to fix, and uh, obviously some homes will probably sell faster if, if maintenance items are handled up front before even putting it on sale. But what about... The sight unseen items when selling a home, do these things often pop up and surprise the seller or the buyer, things that just happen in the middle of a home sale? Yeah, it can. So those are the things that they were trying to avoid being deal killers inside a transaction is uh, let's say that, that a home is under contract and the home inspector goes out and finds a framing problem in the attic. We had a home in Blanchard like that a few months back where there was a swale, kind of a, a dip in the roof line. Okay. Home inspector crawled up. It was not real pronounced, but it was there. Home inspector crawled up and found out it just wasn't framed correctly. It was a smaller builder who had done the job. It ended up being about a two to $3,000 job to get that framed right. Other things might be heat and air issues. It could be perhaps that there are shingles on top of shingles at a home. That's what we call a layover. So if there's older shingles... And then a roofer goes in, and it's really not done much today, but we've certainly seen it. And they lay a layer of shingles over a layer of shingles. There's a lot of insurance companies that just won't insure that property. I didn't know they did that. You don't see it very often. Okay. It's almost like sewer line problems. Dave, we had another one this week where I talked to a customer, and he had had a problem with the sewer line after he closed on a home. You know, you can get a, a sewer line camera run through the sewer line on older homes and sometimes find issues with sewer lines. So these are the things we're trying to avoid up front that could kill a deal. No seller wants to lose the contract. So home, you right? going in and first off meeting with the seller, you're going to have things checked out, maybe get the pre-inspection. But I think you've mentioned this before. You have a program for this that basically puts these out in the open so that the buyer knows coming in that it's... Um, is it kind of like, you know, the certified used car program? You have something like that for homes, right? I do. We've got what's called our certified pre-owned program to try to find these deal breakers up front that often derail a transaction before it goes to closing. What are some of the solutions for someone who plans to sell and wants to assure they don't lose the deal on their home after they sign? So this is where a consultation comes in in regard to selling your home. Most people might think, or a lot of people might think, especially those who have not sold before, is if I call Wally and we sit down, I guess we're just going to sign some papers and put my home up for sale. And I would prefer to have a consultation with a homeowner to say, what are your goals? What are your plans? Sure. How do I help you accomplish your plans? What do you think needs to happen here? And a homeowner will probably look at me and say, hey, what do you think about my home? Do you see anything that needs to be done? This is, Dave, where if I'm placing a home for sale that was built in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, maybe these sewer lines are older. Maybe we've got some electrical systems that are Federal Pacific systems where they've had problems with the breaker box. So okay. it, it may be, Dave, if I were sitting down with you today, I'd first say, Dave, what are your goals? How do I help you get there? you're likely to turn to me and say, what do you see, Wally, on my home that either I ought to fix or not fix, sure. right? yes. And where do you think we could end up seeing some issues? You know, it was built in the 60s. 
and my sewer line hasn't been replaced. First thing I would probably say is, Dave, it might be a good idea not even to get necessarily just a pre-inspection right now. Maybe we need to get a plumbing company over here to run a camera through the sewer line and make absolutely sure that we don't have any issues. Hey, Dave, uh, have you had any hail in your neighborhood? Of course. Over the last year, you have to live in Oklahoma, <laughs> right? Yes. Dave, have you had a roofer look at it? Yeah, Wally, I did. It looked like we were in good shape. My advisement would be don't take any other action. We certainly don't need to call insurance. We don't need to call a roofer. Dave, uh, have you had any electrical problems? Have you had your sewer lines? Are they slow? Do they not drain right? How's your water pressure? You know, things like this. Does your heating and cooling system seem to heat and cool? And are your bills reasonable? You might look at me, Dave, and say, you know, Wally, um, my home's only 2,000 square feet, but I had a $450 electric bill last summer. I said, Dave, you know, where do you keep your thermostat on the inside? Where do you keep your thermostat in your household, Dave, during the summer? About 70. Okay. That's pretty cool, and you could yes. end up with a little bit higher bill. But if someone was at 72, 74, 76, and had a four or $500 electric bill, it might be that your air conditioner condenser is just working so long sure. to cool the house down because it might need Freon. So uh, it's called the, the Certified Pre-Owned Program. Let's find the deal breakers up front. Let's get a pre-inspection ordered. If you've got an older home, maybe it's worth going in and getting that sewer line scoped yes. up front. Yes. Okay. These are the advantages to this, Dave, just real simply, is let's have an opportunity to get multiple estimates if there's a problem. Okay. And not just call one person and cave in. Uh, had a home in Norman this last week, getting ready to put it on the market. She had a pre-inspection done. Home inspector found sand in the ductwork down huh. in the slab, which can indicate maybe ductwork that's pulled apart or needs to be sealed. This company came back and gave about a $7,000 estimate. She called me and I said, no way. They've only identified yeah. a couple of areas. We called the company back and said, look, that's a lot of money. Can you not just go fix what the problem is here? We don't need a guarantee on this. We just need it fixed. Dave, that estimate came from $7,000 down to $1,100. So let's wow. Let's that's... let's consult with the owner. Yes. Let's identify I'm what could be an issue. Have a chance to get multiple estimates if we need to. Another question is: Do we fix it, or do we just disclose it and let somebody else fix and pay for it? We just don't want those big surprises. So this is going to again relieve me of headaches as the seller, uh, knowing what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. And uh, now I've fixed a couple of things. I feel really good about my home. Now, it is a certified pre-owned program. So now as the buyer coming in, I understand that you have this. You put your stamp of approval on it. And I want to purchase the home. Is this something now that I buy the home? I'm in it for nine months or so. And one of those little issues raised its ugly head again. How do you good, move good, around that? Good question. That? Yeah, it's multifaceted. We're also going to do an upfront title search to make sure there are no judgments, no tax okay. liens, and no mortgage releases that need to be taken care of that could slow the sale down. But what you're talking about is two different facets of this program that people really like is our 12-month buyer warranty on the property Okay, that will take care of mechanical systems, HVAC plumbing, electrical, heat and air. So these programs are great because they can cover both the seller while the home is listed for sale and then the buyer after they purchase the home. But Dave, on top of that, I put on a 24 month buyback guarantee to where okay. if you buy a home and it's one of our listings and you're unsatisfied with that home within 24 months, so long as you turn around and buy another replacement home through us, we'll either buy that home back or sell it for free if that's the avenue you want to take. That's fantastic that you do that. That's, yeah, we're that's gonna, really cool. We're going to do a bunch of things. We're going to do a pre-inspection. We're going to do an upfront title search. We're going to have a buyer warranty. And typically, if you're a home seller, a seller warranty on the property to protect you for perhaps repairs that would come up during the home inspection process. We're going to put our buyback guarantee on it. And best of all, Dave, on our certified pre-owned homes, we take that pre-inspection consult with the seller. Which things do you want to fix? Which things do you want to leave alone? We're going to make that pre-inspection report available for the buyer to review 
so that they know they're buying a good home and that these things have already been discovered. We've discussed it with the owner. The buyer says, this is great. I know what might be a deal killer here. I'm coming in from California. I've only got 35 days to close on a home. This is nice that the seller and the realtor had a pre-inspection done to identify what might be wrong. The buyer doesn't want their deal to fall through. Sure. They can pay for inspections themselves if they want to. But the good news is the pre-inspection is going to find the big issues up front. So that's great. That's just another program that you offer to uh, to help people put their mind at ease, really. And if someone is, is thinking about right now, if they weren't thinking about it last week when we said it's time to really start thinking about getting your house on the market, they're sure thinking about it this week, especially with the rates in the next month or so really uh, possibly coming down. They should think about texting you or calling you. It's such an easy thing to do is just text Wally. You don't have to have a conversation if you don't want to. Wally laid it out. Just text him at 330-3000. What, my address and a scale of 1 to 10. It's that easy right off the bat. You might come back and say, hey, let me know. Do you have a pool? Have you done any upgrades? Something I didn't think about probably is just, again, John Q. Home Seller. And I say, oh, yeah, uh, we do have a pool in the backyard. It's pretty nice. And uh, we just put in a pergola. And you're going to go, okay, great. And then uh, later on the day, you're going to shoot me back kind of a ballpark figure of what my home could be worth. And, Dave, I'll add one last word in here yes. as we talk about this pre-owned program, inspections, values, is people come to me for certainty people that really want to sell and really want to buy and they have goals my first question typically is tell me about your plans because that helps me understand what each person needs they're looking for certainty in dealing with me that's the goal is let me help you get where you want to be we just talked about everything to get your home ready to sell what if I do all the recommended repairs. I get it all set up. Uh, Maybe I've done a pre-inspection. I fixed a couple things. There's really nothing more for me to do but sit back and let the offers roll in. But what if that's a little slow? What if it takes a little time? Maybe it's just not selling like we thought it was going to do. What do I do then and when do I start to panic? And that does happen. There may be homeowners right now that are listening to our show that may be listed somewhere else with another agent here in the metro. Maybe things aren't going quite the way you want them to. Maybe you're not getting as many hits. You're not getting as many showings. It's showing, but it's just not selling. People just aren't biting. You're not, it's almost like you're not fishing with the right bait, right? Yes. So I'd recommend you review these four major areas. First of all, looking at the teamwork that's going on. So An agent that's working alone, man, I did it for a lot of years, Dave. And when you're juggling all the balls, you're showing homes, you're going to closings, you're trying to answer inquiries, you're trying to work on your computers, you're trying to do your financials. It's a little overwhelming for one agent to be able to pull off what teamwork can do, which is why we have a team of 31 people is to not only serve our customers that are asking to see homes, but all of our customers, our listing customers, keeping them informed on marketing, taking care of our computers, our IT. Sure. There's a lot that goes on inside an office. So that's why our teamwork works so well, as everybody understands their role. Our listings manager is not putting signs in the yard. We have team couriers that do that. So number one is teamwork. Are you getting what you're paying for from your agent, from who you're listed with right now? And if not, consider looking at someone that's got a team that services customers differently. Number two would be pricing. You know, did you get good advice when you first listed your home for sale or did you even listen? Did an agent say, hey, you need to be listed for 300 and you chose the price of 340? Or did the agent recommend a price that was too high upfront just in hopes of getting the listing? So I would look carefully. Okay. Are you priced right inside the marketplace and, and do some comparisons, do some research? So that's one and two, the condition of your home. Boy, we've spent a lot of time on our shows talking about this, haven't we? Yes. When you leave a home and the impression isn't right, a lot of times you really remember it. Maybe it didn't smell good. Maybe it wasn't real neat. Maybe the paint colors were really loud on the inside. Maybe the home was pink and orange and greens and blues. And you scratch that off your list. And you know how cheap paint is to do, Dave? But it's amazing the number of people that will look at a home online not like the colors and go right past it and actually wow. eliminate it even though all it needs is a, is a coat of paint. So clean is best. Uncluttered is best. 
bright on the inside is best. And don't forget your curb appeal. That's really important. So, you know, pricing and condition and then marketing. Zillow keeps tracks of, of days on market. If a home sits on the market too long and doesn't sell, what goes through your mind? Something's wrong with it. Right. Must be they, overpriced. Something's wrong yes, with it. Yes. People don't like this home. Why should I like it if nobody else does? So sure. pricing is really important. Let's get over to marketing now. So my job is to create quick demand for an owner's home. Any agent should do that. In a market this good, put the home on the market, boom, it should get immediate attention. Before it has a chance to go stale on the market and just sit and sit and to keep the interest in the home alive. And that's what marketing's about is creative ways to get the buyers to want to see the home, right? Yes. You want your home to be showing. Wally has the buyers. I have buyers. You have a list of people looking for that specific, uh, I want this square footage, I want this part of town, and I want this price point. And you go, that's fantastic. I have 23 families that are looking for that. Dave, I can shoot a text or an email to those families that I know are looking right now. You know what the first thing they ask is? Let me see some pictures. Yes. I'd like to see some pictures. So the curb appeal and the way it presents itself on the inside is vital that those look good. We'll help with coaching. We can help with staging. We can help with digital staging for vacant homes. And we do that a lot. Go take a look at a home online that we talked about earlier in our show. If you're listening right now, go to your browser on your desktop, your laptop, your mobile device. Type in 1100 West Lindsay Street. It's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. This happens to be a Norman home yes. that is vacant but virtually staged. It's a gorgeous property. That's a good one to look and at. And that's all part of the, the marketing. That's all part of marketing. Multiple marketing channels, Dave. I have a Google specialist. Allie is our social media specialist. The signage should be right. The signage should engage people. We use three different signs in front of front yards with our Everyday Open House program our 24-hour podcasting, our offer to buy someone else's home if it doesn't sell in an agreed period so they can buy this home they like. We, we sometimes, Dave, even update our ads. Maybe we write an ad on a home and within two weeks we're just not getting the same activity we think we should get. We just delete that ad and start over okay. and get creative. I've seen a lot of real estate agents that post an ad and the home sits and sits and they never change the ad. So updated ad copy, updated pictures, good follow-up practices. This is all marketing and getting people to call us and be interested in homes. Now, if I'm the seller, I'm usually not there when you have an open house. So I really don't know what's going on. I'm not in the mind of the people that are looking for it. How do I know why they didn't choose my house? So feedback is really important for owners. You need feedback, Dave. It's vital to listen to the showing feedback, see what people are saying about your home. You know, unfortunately, we have to chase the feedback from a lot of other agents because we just can't get them to call us back. They get automated requests, but sometimes, Dave, they just don't give us the feedback that our owners need. So you need to hunt them down. We hunt them down. Hit them up against the wall and say, why did you not like my <laughs> Give them the shakedown process. Home. So many agents just don't promptly report, and our owners expect that. They need that to make decisions and changes to what they're going to do. So that's what we do, is we will literally dog these agents that show our sellers homes to get that feedback so that we can share it with the owner and make informed decisions about what we should do next. So if I need to paint a wall, if it's price... If it is something about just the outside look of the home right off the bat, then I know I'm hearing those from them. I need to have a a marketing plan. I obviously didn't have one if my home sat on the market for 90 days. I didn't market my house properly. You know, you could have had a marketing plan and just priced it wrong. But the truth is every home should have its own marketing plan. Dave, it's so much more, as you and I have talked during this show today, than just sticking your sign in the yard putting it on the MLS, holding an open house, and having it be on Zillow and Realtor.com. Marketing is finding the buyer for a home. I do have buyers already. They're in my database. They're waiting for homes like our listeners probably have today and are thinking I might sell. Come to me. Give me a call. Let me get some pictures of your property. Let's get them pushed out to the buyers and see if we don't already have a buyer in our database that we've come across through all of our marketing efforts. Before even doing that, I bet if I'm a seller and I want an example 
of what you've been doing for other people. Well, we don't share all of our marketing secrets on our sites, Dave, sure. but I do have a video that I'm happy to send out to a listener. Okay. And if you would like to have that video that talks more about marketing, the things that we do, text me your telephone number and say, I'd like to see your marketing video. And I will share that with you. I'll need an email address to do that. Okay. Or you can visit wallycur.com. You'll see a lot of our innovative programs, virtual staging, podcasting, the Guaranteed Sale Program. You can see a lot of those things on our website. And that virtual staging is that 1100 block of Lindsay down in North. 1100 West Lindsay Street. Take a look at that one. That's a beautiful listing. I think you'll love it. At the beginning of the show, you mentioned kind of a rundown of what we'll be talking about, and you mentioned that we might be finishing with best down payment and financing options. And that's where I found a home that I like. I'm ready to buy. Uh, we know where the current rates are for those good, decent credit scores. Of course, the interest rate is going to be higher if you have a lower credit score and a little bit lower if you if your credit score is a little bit better. But that's not the case in every situation or scenario. Is that correct? That's right, Dave. So again, FHA and VA loans, because they're government loans, in other words, they're underwritten by the government by just their simple nature, or they're more forgiving. And so typically, you're going to get about the same market rate so long as your credit score is about a 620 to 640 or above. With a lot of lenders, Dave, at 640. With some, they'll go as low as 620. And you still are going to get about the same rate. So if rates today are around six and a half and you've got a 640 credit score on an FHA or VA loan, you're going to get the same interest rate, whether you're 640 or 680 or 700. Does that change down payments? It does not. So the required down payments are the same on FHA and VA. VA loans, Dave, don't require any down payment at all. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you for serving yes, our country. Yes. Thank you to our reservists. They can do a zero down payment. Dave, FHA down payments are typically 3.5%. You can put more down, and the rates are good, and you can qualify with a lower credit score than you could on a conventional. Dave, there's some people that would love to maybe put 10 or 20% down and go conventional, but the qualifying ratios are a little bit lower, and you can qualify for more on an FHA. You've mentioned before as well, what about Native Americans, especially here in Oklahoma? Yeah, Native American loans give a, a real great benefit for obvious reason, lower down payment, and then typically lower mortgage insurance. So those are real beneficial. And then, Dave, there's a program called a USRDA loan, US Rural Development, which means in outlying areas, okay, outside suburban areas. Do you know that's 100% financing? If the listeners are interested in that USRDA program, on your web browser, go in and pull up USDA eligibility map. You can type in an address, and it will tell you if that home qualifies for 100% financing or not, with no oh, down payment. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, now, what about down payment assistance? Now, I have a little bit of a down payment, but I want assistance. What programs offer that? Yeah, there's some great programs. So the Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency here in Oklahoma City, they have a down payment program that's really always ongoing, helps with either 3.5% down payment or up to 3.5% for closing costs paid. There are some stipulations on that, so you need to take a look at it. There's some income limitations, and then what happens if you sell the home quickly and make a lot of money, and part of that could be recoverable, but I'll tell you, it's a really good program. Uh, our preferred lender, Chris Doak with Gateway Mortgage, has a 5% down payment assistance program right now. Okay. If you're a buyer and you'd like to buy a home and you think maybe you just don't have enough money saved up, there are programs available for you. Down payment, closing cost assistance, Call me or text me, and I'll steer you in the right direction. But check out OHFA, the Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency, and they can help. So you mentioned before certain percentages you need to have to get rid of, like PMI. But there was also something we talked about before that was like an 80-10-10, where I'm financing 80%, I'm putting 10% down, but I'm also financing 10% or something? That's like a, um, was that a buy down or something? This or is just it... a second mortgage. There's so many good options out there, right? Dave? There's a lot of options. There are actually some <laughs> 3% down conventional loans to go conventional 
reasonable mortgage insurance as long as you've got a credit score of about 700 or above. Okay. So if you'd like information, text me on that, 330-3000. It's really better than an FHA option. There are 5% down conventionals. There's 10% down conventionals. A lot of people, Dave, like you were just talking about, think the only way to get rid of the PMI is to put 20% down. Hmm, not so fast. There's this 80-10-10. Yes, okay. It's it's an 80% first and a 10% second mortgage and a 10% down payment. The nice part about this is you get to write off the interest on both the first and second mortgage against your taxes. You get a tax deduction for the interest. And the other thing I like, let's say for a minute you have a relative that you know will be passing. Maybe you're going to get an inheritance. You can actually take that money and pay off that second mortgage, and there's no prepayment penalty on it whatsoever. That's what I was going to ask. I do remember that. Now we've got no PMI. And and here's what's bad about PMI, Dave. You can't write off PMI. There's no deduction for PMI on your taxes. So as opposed to going in and putting down only 10% on a loan and borrowing 90% and not being able to write off the PMI, check out this 80-10-10 option, this 80 15 5 option 5% down okay 80% first mortgage 15% second mortgage write off the interest on both of those loans as a part of your tax deductions at the end of the year and then you have the right to go pay off that 10 or 15% second mortgage at any time and then there are arms and buy downs adjustable rate mortgages buy downs means i'm going to buy the rate down lower than it is a buy down would be like today's rate 6 and a half I know I'm going to make more money next year and the year after, so I'm going to buy my rate down. I'm going to start at 4.5. I'm going to go to 5.5 a a year later, and then I'm going to get bumped to a fixed rate of 6.5. I don't think I'd do that right now, Dave, because we expect interest rates in the coming months. A lot of optimism about rates coming down soon. That's a lot of options. There are a lot of options options. available. There really are, Dave. Uh, I'll be glad to be your advisor in the current market for not only finding the right home, selling your home for the highest price in the shortest amount of time with the least inconvenience to you. Glad to offer you our guaranteed to sell program, our get your home ready offer up front. If you're just an owner that's just looking for a cash offer today, call me. We're looking for some homes to buy right now. You're always going to make more money if you put your home on the market, let the market see it, let the market bid up or tell you what the home is worth. You're always going to do better putting the home on the market, but if someone needs a cash offer on their home and they need to sell now, I'd be glad to visit with them. Call me. I'll help you with financing. I'll help you buying and selling. I'd consider it a privilege to work with you. So you can go to wallyhasthebuyers.com. You can always text Wally, 330-3000. Learn more about Wally, his unique home selling system, which includes, of course, uh, the guaranteed home sale program. We did mention that as well. Quick, give me 30 seconds on the guaranteed home sale program. I can do it in 10. In the unlikely event that your home doesn't sell in an agreed period, I'll buy your home at a price agreeable to you, a price we agree to up front. No gimmicks. No sales pitch. It's a real program. We've been running it, Dave, since 2007. Today's Your Home Sold Guaranteed radio show with Wally Kerr has been sponsored by Oklahoma Home Inspection Service. That's Todd Stewart. His phone number, 366-8889. And that's great to learn more about the pre-inspection so you don't get into the deal and figure out that you need a new roof, a new AC. Call Todd Stewart, 405-366-8889. Proud sponsor of the show, Oklahoma Home Inspection Service. The show, of course, airs every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. And you can hear a replay of the same show Sundays at noon right here on KOKC. Again, you're thinking of making that move. You're thinking about what can I get for my house? Text the address 330-3000 to get an estimated value for your home. You get no phone call, just a text. You can hear replays of the show on Wally's YouTube channel. Listen to the podcast and all the podcast platforms, including Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, iHeartRadio, many others. Again, go to the website, wallytalkshouses.com. Previous episodes will be there. You can register for Wally's upcoming webinar Saturday. Is it June 3rd? Is our, the next, first Saturday? our next investors webinar, it is the first Saturday. I don't have my calendar with me. I June think that's 3rd. the right date. June 3rd. June 3rd, 10 a.m., right? That's right. 10 a.m. Love to have you join me on a webinar, and we'll talk about investing in real estate. 
You can pre-register for that event by visiting the website. Click on the registration link at the top of the page. It's right next to the subscription button. Again, that website, of course, is wallytalkshouses.com. Thank you for listening. And to reach Wally, give him a call. Text him 405-330-3000. Thank you for listening. Wally, you get the last word. Dave, thanks for doing the show today. Look forward to being back here with you next week.